So DuckDuckGo is probably one of the more notable privacy search engines, but they do more than just make a search engine. They've also had a mobile web browser for quite a while. I believe on Android, it's based on Chromium, whereas on the iOS side, because you don't really have an option, it's based on Safari. And in 2022, they're gonna be working on a lot of cool and new projects, but the one I wanna focus on today is the desktop web browser they're making. Now, you might be a really big fan of DuckDuckGo's vision and really excited for this project, but let me crash you all the way back down to reality and maybe a couple of levels underground. Now, I can't speak for what it's actually going to do, what its feature set actually will be, because outside of the closed beta on macOS, we just don't really know. All we know at this point are the platitudes they give us about how there's no levels of privacy. It's just private. It's not a privacy browser. It's just a good browser that respects your privacy. All we know in the feature set is that it's going to have the same fire button that you see on mobile, where you can see it burn away all of your data into the ether. Basically, it has a clear history button. No one really cares if you say it's going to be private. None of that really means anything until it's actually in the hands of users and people can actually test if it actually is private and if it meets their levels of privacy. What I think is more important is this statement right here. Instead of forking Chromium or anything else, we're building our own desktop app around the OS provided rendering engines like on mobile, allowing us to strip away a lot of the unnecessary cruft and clutter that's accumulated over the years in major browsers. This is a really interesting statement because they're effectively openly lying to you without really lying to you. So I've seen some people say, hey, this is great. They're actually gonna build their own web browser. See, they say it's not gonna be based on Chromium or anything else, so that means it's it's going to be its own new thing. It's going to be its own rendering engine. That sounds great, except maybe it'd be really private, but it'd have a bunch of day zero vulnerabilities and be a security nightmare. But that's not what they've actually said. So they say they're not going to be forking Chromium. They're going to be building around the OS provided rendering engines. What does that actually mean? Well, let's take macOS for example. So macOS ships with Safari and Safari is based on the WebKit engine. So the OS provided engine would be WebKit in this case. Okay, well, what about the Linux side then? Well, on Linux, you can't really say that one engine is the OS provided engine. You could argue WebKit GTK or maybe Gecko, but literally anything could count. In this case, you could say Firefox or Chromium also are the OS provided rendering engines. Well, what about Windows then? Windows ships with Edge. Edge is based on Chromium. So that means Chromium is the OS provided rendering engine. Maybe it's not based on Edge. Maybe it's instead based on WebView 2, but WebView 2 is also just a fork of Chromium. So it's just Chromium with extra steps. So technically you're not forking Chromium, you're forking Edge, which also forks Chromium. To say that a Windows version of this wouldn't be based on Chromium seems completely disingenuous. And I reached out to DuckDuckGo for comment and I didn't get any response. So I'm just gonna have to assume that this statement right here is an absolute lie. But even so, the statement itself contradicts itself. You're not forking Chromium or anything else, but you're using the OS provided rendering engine. So you're either using them or you're not using them. Pick one or the other. Let's just completely take them their word and say they're not gonna ship a Chromium based web browser to every single operating system they make it for, which I wouldn't be surprised if it does. Let's just say that doesn't happen. While modern rendering engines are really, really good and most web browsers are fairly consistent, they're not identical. This is going to lead to a really, really inconsistent browsing experience because some sites just run better on WebKit or run better on Chromium or maybe run better on Firefox if there's one weird site that somehow does that. But that's just the rendering side. What about web extensions? So I know on the mobile side, web extensions still aren't really a thing that most people take advantage of. I don't think the mobile version of Chrome even supports them. I know the mobile version of Brave does, but most people probably don't use web extensions on mobile. Desktop though, it's pretty common to at least have one or two, even just basic things you might want to install. But every single rendering engine that supports web extensions supports a completely different setup. 
So is there maybe going to be a translation layer? So if you want to install an extension from any of the supported engines, it just somehow manages to magically make them work in the background. Or maybe you have like a custom extension format that sort of does the translation layer, but in reverse. The problem with having a custom extension format is then you need developers to actually support it. Most people are making extensions for Firefox or Chromium. Maybe you just use like user scripts or something like you'd have for like the surf browser but then you'd still have such a tiny tiny base of extensions that are available i don't think either of those solutions would be viable they'd both be massive projects just by themselves so i sort of have to assume this browser either won't support extensions whatsoever which basically kills any use case for the vast majority of people who would ever consider using it, me being one of them, I want to have all of my web extensions that I'm used to using working on the browser I go to, or it's going to have different web extensions based on what the rendering engine actually is. So if you're on the WebKit version, you're going to have WebKit extensions. If you're on the Chromium version, you will have Chromium extensions, which makes it very difficult to recommend the browser because you're going to have a completely different experience based on what operating system you're using it on. So you cannot easily migrate all of your stuff over from one system to another. Later in that paragraph, there is another really interesting point made. Compared to Chrome, the DuckDuckGo app for desktop is cleaner, way more private, and early tests have found it to be significantly faster too. Wow, it must be such a great web browser. Well, way more private compared to Google Chrome isn't exactly something to write home about. Like, don't take my data. That's the baseline you need to be at to be more private than Chrome. That's pretty easy. Now, when they say cleaner... This indicates to me that there are things that are cut out. They've gotten rid of certain features and certain UI elements, and they mentioned up here that they can strip away a lot of the unnecessary cruft and clutter that's accumulated over the years in major browsers. So if your starting point is Chrome, right? Or Chromium, sorry. If your starting point is Chromium, you strip out features compared to what Google Chrome has, yes it's going to be faster. If I literally take off my weighted jacket and then go for a sprint compared to when I was wearing the weighted jacket, I wonder which one's going to be faster. The way they phrase this make it sound like they've done something crazy. They've created this amazing new web browser, but they literally just made Chromium less heavy and then compared it against Chromium. Okay. One important thing to note is there's been literally no word on whether the desktop browser is actually going to be open source. Now, I do trust that DuckDuckGo is going to do that because the Android version actually is. Also, the Android version is available on F-Droid if you'd like to get it from there. That's really cool. I trust that they will do it. And if they don't, well, there's literally no reason to ever use it because there's no reason to ever use a proprietary web browser unless it is being forced on you. Because let's say you need Chromium. Don't bother using Google Chrome, just use base Chromium. Every single decent web browser is open source. Maybe you could justify using Vivaldi with its proprietary UI, that's probably the only one I would ever think about. While I'm being very critical of what we know so far because the way they are phrasing stuff is kind of disingenuous, I'm going to hold out any final judgment until there is a web browser in front of me. Maybe not just a Linux version, but even just a macOS or a Windows version available to the public. When there is a Linux version, though, you absolutely know I will be testing it and finding out if there's literally any reason to run it or just run something else. For now though, I wouldn't set your hopes very high and I'm just going to keep using Brave until I find something better. Even though we don't know much right now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you going to try out the DuckDuckGo browser when one day it eventually makes its way to the operating system you use? Or do you just feel happy on what you're using right now and nothing's going to make you change? I would love to know. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you go check out my Patreon. It's currently linked in the description down below. I've got other links down there as well. Links, check them out. Things, podcast, gaming channel, and I'm out. Yeah, that's how the outro goes.